Hi, I'm Chad Barker. Today I'll continue talking about the A51 stream cipher used in GSM mobile communications. We'll talk about a couple of solutions to the cryptographic breach. In addition, we'll go back to the problem a little bit. First, if you remember the simple diagram I drew in my last presentation where I showed uh, the base station here in blue and the, the handset encrypted, uh, the voice encrypted by A51. Uh, one solution is to change algorithms and to do that, it requires a, a hardware change. So you can see where I've you know, drawn a second uh, kind of antenna thing here representing the base station and a handset. And in 3G, um, we actually moved to an algorithm called Katsumi. And so Katsumi was developed uh, more in the open as opposed to A51, which was developed in secret. In addition, it's a, a block cipher as opposed to a, a stream cipher, so more secure in the 3G network space. Now we have uh, 4G as well. And these 3G and 4G phones are still capable of going back to 2G type networks. Um, so if you're concerned about that, you can reference your manual and maybe configure your phone to avoid the, the 2G space altogether. The other solution involves uh, going back to the problem just a bit. And I want to talk about the, the data frame that gets sent. The 184 bits are the, the ones that the, the hackers will care about and they'll watch for those and they're actually encoded first uh, into 456 bits and then sent in four bursts of 114-bit packets. And while the 114-bit burst is being sent, it's actually divided again into two 57-bit uh, chunks here, and then there's um, some, some beginning and end bits added with some training bits in the middle. Um, so this payload area is uh, the, where the data we want to get at is, and what will happen is the, the hackers will watch for the end of a cipher mode negotiation. And after uh, that known signature occurs, if the message is shorter than what the 456-bit accommodates for, they use padding in these areas. And the padding is predictable, so the hackers can use lookup tables to reference and get internal state of A51. Using this uh, type of information along with uh, communication channel type information, which I referenced in my paper, the hackers can slowly um, you know, break apart A51 with more and more information. So the change that's been recommended at this point was uh, to do some randomizing of this data, which requires only a change down here at the base station. For whatever reason, it hasn't been widely adopted, presumably because the equipment is, um, is moving more fast. So the two solutions, either change equipment or uh, randomize the, the payload data. Uh, thanks again for watching.